We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio 162. This is B, the Trash Day side here. Uh, recorded live Friday, August 18th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, with my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith and Daniel Atherton. Uh, they're going to dive through the garbage pail with me here. And, uh, of course, we're going to make some mistakes, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so if you find one or just don't like what we've said or maybe the sound of my voice or maybe I have something like vocal fry or something like that that you simply have to let me know about, go ahead and send us a note at a really radio podcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. And I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters before we get into it here. we got Donald Davis, Melissa G. Henry, Daniel Duncan of the Problem Addict Podcast, which you definitely ought to go check out. And they help keep the lights on. Thank you very much, folks. All right. So, um, it's been busy. Uh, it's been a week. Last, uh, really, <sighs> couple weeks. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just this, just this week. Just this week, folks. Yeah. We've, we've had a lot. Oh, uh, before we get started here, since we're going to be kind of in that belt of, of area, on Monday, the 21st, you know, at least for the people that might be actually checking this out live, uh, there is a total solar eclipse that's going to blanket from Oregon to uh, Charlotte, South Carolina. All the way across. Uh, the last time that happened was in 1979. It was through different uh, different regions, and the next time it's going to happen is in 2024. So, if you can get to one of the um, what what are they called the total totality areas, uh, I highly recommend it. I, I unfortunately uh, did not have proper planning, and will be working. But whatever you do. Don't stare at the sun. No. Uh, because if you burn your retina, it doesn't heal. You will have a black spot on the back of your eyeball for the rest of your days. So you'll always remember that, that one sight. Always. So don't do that. Um, there are special glasses that block out 100% of the UV light and basically make it really, really dark. Uh, there are also... You know, welder's goggles are still not the best, but they will help you. Uh, but if you really want to observe it without actually looking at it, you can get a shoebox. You can cut a hole in the bottom of the shoebox and a hole at the top. Put a piece of uh, uh, aluminum foil over the top and put a pinhole right in the aluminum foil. And then just have that and look into the box. Don't look up. Look into the box and you'll see the sight. And uh, down here in Florida, we're not going to have a totality. Uh, in most of the country, you're not going to have a totality. You're going to have a sliver of the, uh, of the sun covered. And that's still not something to just stare at. <laughs> so don't do that. So um, be careful and uh, warn your children. Because they don't know things. So let them know. And just okay. remember, looking at, the, looking at the eclipse, if you stare into the void and it blinks first, you win. But the prize is insanity. That's right. That's right, I've heard that today. So, uh, speaking of the South and areas like that. Insanity. Um, so the, the South apparently was trying to rise again this week. Uh, the worst parts of it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Saturday, after we would have recorded, the shit hit the fan in Charlottesville, Virginia, as a bunch of white supremacists turned out to protest the removal of a Robert E. Lee statue. It got very ugly. Uh, lots of lots of very pasty white people with tiki torches came out and shouted things like, "You will not replace us. Jews will not replace us." Um, blood and soil. Blood and soil. A lot of white nationalist messages. Everything that can be related directly back to Nazism. Carrying neo-Nazi flags and regalia. Yeah. Yeah. Stormtroopers out there. Performing Nazi salutes, mm -hmm. um, some saying and, uh, "Heil Trump." That was that was delightful. While dressed in his, essentially a Trumpian costume, which was khakis, a white polo, and "Make America Great" hats. Yeah, a lot of lot of MAGA out there. And uh, let's see, there were also the 
militias that showed up to uh, and protect. parade beforehand. Did they parade as well? Of they, course they, they, they did. Per, they, they parade beforehand, brandishing their weapons and uh, essentially scaring the cops. That's as well. because they were better armed than the, than the police. Better armed and armored. Yeah. These guys were carrying Full tactical heavy kit. tactical kit. And, you know, they intimidated the police. Um, it, it, it was an incredibly sad and terrifying state of affairs. And let's be, let's just cut bait here. Um, these people were looking to incite violence and cause problems. And a yep. woman died. Many were injured. And instead of doing what in, in political terms, as, as grim as this is, is a uncontested layup, uh, the Republican president failed to mm-hmm. demonstrably denounce white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Uh, the best way you can frame his conduct on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday – is a neo-Nazi apologist. Well, yeah, what he had was a, I've heard referred to as a reverse Godwin situation. Okay, well, for, for our listeners, you, you might want to go over the, the, the Godwin. Godwin's well. law, which has come up a lot in, especially with just the, the internet age in general, is the idea of that, any conversation on the internet, if it goes on long enough, eventually something will be compared to the Nazis or Hitler. And at that point, essentially, you have lost the argument because Spoke, you've gone off the rails. Yeah. Uh, spoke simply on the Wikipedia article. As an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Hitler approaches one. <laughs> in this case, <sighs> it <since>. simply will. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in this case, you've seen because of especially our dear leader's uh, reluctance oh. to call them what they were. Uh, it's the you lose because you didn't mention exactly what they were with all the flags flying and everything else. Yeah, this is also no. known as uh, mimetics, reductio ad Hitlerum, uh, <laughs> Bernoulli trial, and uh, just Mike Godwin. <laughs> okay, uh, but yeah, no this this was incredibly messy. Um, and this has emboldened uh, many white supremacists and neo-Nazis for Trump's conduct uh, and what he did not say and that he didn't immediately come out and condemn. And, and let, let's be frank here. As soon as this happened, many, many Republicans, ardent Republicans, mm-hmm. came out and denounced this immediately yeah um and let's give them credit uh no they were 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 forceful in calling out nazism white supremacy and no there there is no moral equivalency here yes there are there aren't many sides there are two one involves nazis and they are is people trying to stop nazis yeah what was what was um not hitler what was trump's statement (laughs) Damn, there was a Freudian slip. Uh, what was what was Trump's statement on it? It was, you know, there, there was violence on on many sides. Yeah, many, many sides. sides. Many, it's many like, sides. Not really. Not really. Hey, talk, talk they came to the... party. They came dressed yeah. to kill. You know, yeah. you don't bring a, your own riot shield with you to what you're going to be a peaceful protester for. You don't bring you don't metal do that. clubs and beat people with them if you are peacefully protesting. Mm-hmm. But again, it's, you talk about prominent Republicans bringing up their their problems with this and calling on Trump to go like, "Hey, this is wrong." Mm-hmm. And anybody who's paid attention to especially American politics in the last thirty plus years, the name Orrin Hatch should come to your head. And again, a tweet from Orrin Hatch was. We should call evil by its name. My brother didn't give his life fighting Hitler for Nazi ideas to go unchallenged here at home. Yeah. When Orrin Hatch has the high ground in an argument, you've got problems. Seriously. I, 
I'm with you on that. Totally. <laughs> well, and even going back, uh, something that came across my feed just hours before we we we, we started broadcast is uh, I love living in the information age because once something's recorded, someone will find it. Yeah. Um, and recordings of Ronald Reagan and Bob Dole talking about white supremacy and that it has no business within the Republican Party. And it should be denounced and trounced out as swiftly as possible. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, just to, to move forward uh, incrementally, one more here. Um, punching Nazis has been a big issue ever since Richard Spencer came out and, you know, got his face uh, rearranged a little bit. It was really a light punch, and clearly we should not go around punching people. However, and, you know, I, I'm sure that there are people saying, oh, here he goes. Well, yeah, probably I am. But there's a point when people feel threatened, and people holding weapons, armor, big guns, and things that are on fire in front of you shouting how they're going to kill you and your entire family and everyone like you, there ends up being a point where that is inciting violence. Yes. Where you feel threatened by these people. And you're going to react. There's going to be a reaction. And when you react, make sure to do it properly. So... (laughs) In this uh, in this little graphic that I'm now sharing, uh, it one of the people there he did get his face punched. I mean, his head moved uh, to that side quite quite nicely, and that arm came down real quick. But oh, my this, neck hurts just looking at it. I know that that's that's a that's a heck of a punch there. Good he was arm. trying for the he was trying for the button got too high. Yeah. Well, so that also the funny thing is that occurred in Germany to give people's opinion. Uh, knowledge of that that was a drunk american tourist deciding to be an idiot oh it and was doesn't, yeah that was in germany and that's a german trying to knock the crap out of them i'm going that's because in germany the home where all this mm-hmm. started they fully outlawed it and are really against it yeah but yeah, they, they don't as, they don't like that they don't count that. as a martial artist let me do a very brief well, tutorial go, well go ahead and and read this if you would then because yeah. this is elegantly put this is how you put it. Essentially, yeah, what you see in this photo, this is not okay. This is not the way to hit somebody. And yes, it does set a dangerous example. If you punch a Nazi like this, you're going to break your wrist. <laughs> Remember, you want to make contact with the two largest knuckles, these two right here, your first and middle finger, and you want to keep a strong wrist. Now, I also see something else in his fist that this person did not see, but that comes from me having done martial arts for many, many years. If you look where his thumb is located, it's actually in front of his finger. That's a great way to break your thumb when you punch somebody. Yep. Now, how to properly form a fist. First, take your thumb out of the equation. And roll your fingers down. Your thumb, you want down there. That way, it's holding everything together. It's nice and tight. And it's out of the way when you employ these. There you go. This is in your martial arts moment. <laughs> so stay out, stay safe out there, and keep punching Nazis. Yes. Um, obviously, uh, that actually, is a that is a controversial statement. Uh, I think I it always will be for, for the 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 punching of Nazis. Um, if you are being fully on threatened, I I am a yeah. fan of a more uh, old fashioned and traditional American weapon of choice. And that is the baseball bat. Ah. Um, the Louisville have, slugger. As long as you have a glove and ball, it is perfectly legal to carry around with you. But you must have the glove and ball to go with the best baseball bat. You can, However, you can have short ones. Uh, a lot of truck drivers have them because they knock their tires with them. Making, oh, sure, yeah. making sure that but, they have mud off uh, them and, and that they're sound. I am less violence inclined. However, one of the good things that has been happening, but also one of the controversial things that has been happening because of this, um, has been finding out 
who these people are because unlike their ancestors, they weren't smart enough to wear hoods. Um, yep. And identifying these people and bringing their identities to their employers and informing them of what they have done. Uh, now, unfortunately, there has been a few false identifications which have thoroughly scared people and caused a lot of havoc. But for those that have been properly identified, fortunately, a number of them have now realized that there are consequences for trying to be a weekend Nazi. I'm sorry, there, there are very few things more hilarious I've seen than a grown man who, yes, I, I'm sorry for the the gender issue here, but it's, I've come from, this, from the old school. I'm trying to get better than that. But this guy who's this hardcore guy, shaved head, Oh, that one. Weeping and crying so much because how mean these people are. And that there was a so warrant scared. out for him. Yeah. Because there was now a warrant out for him. All of like, uh, yeah, you were inciting violence and calling for the ethnic cleansing of a people. There are consequences to your actions, you idiot. Deal with them. Yeah, there, there really should be. But, you know, the, these folks, they think they think they're being supplanted. And I can understand a little bit of where they're coming from, mm-hmm. but I'm also intelligent enough to know that they're just wrong. The I rising a, tide lifts all boats. It does. I had a... All boats. Your boat, my boat, everybody's boat. As a storytelling writer, I come, I come across this thing of, and you know this, anybody who's gamed or an NFL, everything mm-hmm. else goes, everybody is the hero of their own story. Yes, and anybody who's evil does not think of themselves as evil. They think, of course, they're good. They're the righteous one. The Everything other people are the problem. Do. Yeah. And, you know, once you take a step back and look at this, you kind of go, okay, I know that you calling for this cleansing, calling for all this murder and genocide and whatever else, you think you're the good guy. Okay. Yes, as much as I am all for the Nazi punching and everything else, mm-hmm. um, for those people who are better than me, Try to talk to these people and find out why they believe what they believe. What is their story that they have been told and are telling themselves? And through you learning that, you will then know how to completely destroy their ideology. It, and it is an ideology that has been taught to them. This is not – you don't start out as no. a neo-Nazi. You don't start out as a white supremacist. You start out as a child with a childlike wonder of the world where everything is magical to you. And Mm -hmm. somebody has to explain away Santa Claus and explain away, you know, religious differences and ethnic differences and different skin color. Somebody put those ideas in their head. Somebody did, but also sometimes it's something that they stumble into. Yeah. Um, Thanks to a lot of research done by many smart people with organizations like the FBI, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, um, as well as some former uh, reformed skinheads, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, Mm -hmm. um, the – the paraphernalia, the culture, the the information, the media for white supremacy, for Nazism, it's there if you want to find it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these individuals feel um, threatened. They're fearful. They're, they feel like they have lost agency yeah. and are looking for an excuse. Um, they are looking to to be proven that they're not the vic- that their plight is because of someone else. Right. They're and looking they're for lo- someone to blame. They're looking for someone to blame. They're looking for a target and somebody that they can actually act upon. It's one thing when it's well, it's the actual system. It's the the wealthy. That's hard to fight. But you know, black people. Well. There are plenty of yeah. black people who are poor, so you can hurt them. Um, and the, the difference is more delineated. It's more clear. It's not just a guy in a suit. Um, so this is easy for people to 
make a self real uh, rationalization and all this stuff and adopt this culture. Um, and one of the ways that many times you can reach out and destroy the ideology is many of these individuals think themselves Christians. Oh yeah. And it's easy to just go, okay, so you're telling me that you're a Christian. Uh, will you agree that the, the majority of teachings that Christians abide by is the word of Christ? And then just go to the Beatitudes and uh, you know, that go won't, that right won't, there. That won't work. <laughs> it, that will not work. Mm. It, Sadly. It, the, the religious argument alone really probably won't work. Um, what does work is when you put somebody in front of them that they think they hate, and then that person turns out to be really cool and they like them. That ends that up being the personal too. connection, but that's, of course, much harder to do in mass. Initiate, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have to have people that are willing to talk at all on both sides. Because Along those lines, you brought up a good point. Uh, I, I, I've listened to this guy talk before. Uh, for all of our listeners out there, go find a man named Daryl Davis. Oh, I th- yeah, I think I, know, I think I know the man. Yeah. Yeah, he's a – I've heard this guy's story. It's amazing. He is literally a black keyboardist who's worked with Chuck Berry, Little Richard, etc., um, but he has a side hobby and that is studying race relations and specifically racism and extreme hatred, like groups of like the KKK, neo-Nazis, etc., the Aryan movements. And he is the person who is responsible for the reason I believe it is Maine no longer having the KKK because he literally made friends with all of them over time. It took years and every single one of them gave up their beliefs and the KKK and left, he literally has a closet of hoods and robes, including from an Imperial Grand Wizard who was essentially the leader of the country at the time. That they've been, I just can't do this anymore. All the stuff I've been taught is bullshit. Here, I'm leaving. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, no, that's D- a trophy case. D A R Y L Davis out on Wikipedia, Daryl underscore Davis at Wikipedia. Uh, and that will I will go ahead and I'll let me drop this in the show notes so you, you guys yeah, can, a, can go find him. There's a documentary called Actional Courtesy. Uh, he's had several uh, I've heard the story several times on like several NPR podcasts. Uh, go check them out. It is absolutely amazing. And yet yeah, this guy is not me. I could not do what he does. Um, I certainly wouldn't be able to do the boogie woogie piano. No, nor but just, would I possibly be able to befriend 20 KKK members and, and really get through to them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he there's, yeah, he's a good man. He's a good man out there. Um, and you know what we would like, we'd all like to be these better people, you know, that Stephen Pinker's book, the better angels of our nature, you know, for instance, uh, we, but it's hard. And it's certainly easy to say bunch of Nazi because everybody wants to be Indiana Jones. So, I mean, it's, it's just a thing. But I am not a violent person. I have no desire to strike anyone ever. I'm much more of a wordsmith. I'd rather talk it out. A lot of these people, they, they have no interest in talking to somebody of, an, of another mindset because they think that you're the enemy already. They've been programmed that way. And it's, it's part of this the whole mindset, the whole ethos of, of them. And it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to reach them. But it's also difficult um, to reach a lot of people. This is a problem yeah. with ideological differences. <laughs> but one of the things that you can do um, if you are going to try for that conversation or to try and be a bulwark if you're going out to help protest and you happen to be white... Oh, I think I know where you're going with this one. Carry on. Dress well. That's it. Dress in <laughs> yes. heck up well. Uh, like you're going to an interview. Like you're going to a wedding. Um, or church. Or church. Your Sunday best. Um, you're going to no. meet the president. Yeah. The you, one you, you like. You, yes. <laughs> you're, you're going to meet a hero. You, you dress to the nines because mm-hmm. that's not what they're expecting. You dress to a um, Yeah. Also, 
the other thing is this will also help protect you should the police get a little antsy. It's true. Um, people Especially who are dressed- for the, 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 the milk toast folks, you yeah. know, us pasty white people. Uh, but the, the finer dressed you are, the, it, it's almost armor. It is. Uh, it is. And this is called weaponized privilege. Yes. Where you're taking, uh, taking yourself, making yourself that shining armor kind of person and putting yourself in between those that are being oppressed. Using your privilege. Using your privilege yeah. in that way. Then if th- they have to go through you to get to them, and that's a bad photo op. Also, it causes uh, a, a bit of cognitive dissonance in their heads and, and sort of short circuits for a bit. Um, yeah. And again, be calm, be cool, be collected, be polite, mm-hmm. um, and be a wall. Yeah. And that can help keep people safe. And also, should violence happen, most of the times it will not occur to you. And if it does... In this day and age, it's probably going to get caught on camera, and yeah. boy, they're going to look bad. And we saw the that same will be thing. Used to prosecute. We saw a similar thing, not the same thing, with the angel costumes protecting those at the funerals and um, and LGBT protests around, you know, the Pulse and everything that yes. happened after that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's you look bad if you attack an angel. Don't care who you are. You look bad if you're attacking an angel. You're going to do that? Is that a bridge too far? Probably is. It, 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 again, symbols can be used as armor. Yep. And it's, it's very, it's not that hard to do. You can thrift. Um, Oh yeah. Goodwill's fed. It it is flush with coats and nice finery things that, you know, you'll have to look through to try and match things and make, make them fit, but it's all there and it's cheap. More importantly, if things go down wrong, you're not really, you know, ruining a really good suit. Absolutely. There's definitely, by by all means thrift. And no, this, this is something that if you, you feel like going out there and protesting, if you're wanting to help, this is an excellent way to do it. And it's also a way to keep yourself and others safe. Um, it is just, you dress incredibly well and do your best. Again, it's, it's hard to keep to the bare, bare angels of our nature. But be calm, be polite, and be that wall. It's the right thing to do. I mean, if, if you can, do it. I understand that a lot of people are not going to be able to. And if you can, then have, have that online conversation. Try to, you know, I know it's an awful lot like beating your head against a wall, but, you know, you, you, might, you might find that loose brick. You might. You, you might find the chink in the armor. Yeah. Um, again, I, I have heard stories where the, the religious argument has worked, um, but most of the time those are by theologians and priests, not, not laity. Yeah, um, yeah. And being able to throw biblical quotes and throw down and go, this is what your actual religion states. Are you this or are you not? Except their actual religion also states that slavery is okay. Again, it's... And that it is okay to beat your wives and is okay to, you know, do all these things. It's trying to... It's it's trying to get to the, 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 the point of, okay, you're saying you're a Christian what does that mean to you? What is your definition? Are, are you somebody who holds to the words of Christ? Or are you taking a lot of the older texts that have been translated time and time again and have no context for modern day? Well, I don't know, man. That's kind of a rough call there. But you know what wasn't uh, again, a rough call? What? That Steve Bannon was fired. That was hilarious. <laughs> Uh, again, I, 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 I have, I, I, I taste tin foil on this one, but I am delighted. <laughs> we'll chomp right down on that. Would you, <laughs> um, again, with, with all the stuff that's been coming out with, with Bannon's ouster, um, Steve Bannon, the former now, uh, chief white house strategist 
former Breitbart editor and chief, and and now back to Breitbart, and right back to Breitbart editor in chief. Yeah, so uh, uh, because he he was with him at the helm, people were more than willing to he's, he's such a uh, sponsor and and give them money. Such a lovely uh, man, ads. isn't he? Just a lovely, uh, lovely man. And Ugh. there are a number of, of theories as to why he was ousted. Um, the one that I'm currently going on and wrapping myself in a tinfoil blanket is with Kelly, the new chief of staff, mm-hmm. Disco, and the really bad press and banning soaking up a little too much spotlight for some time now Kelly being able to frame things to the president why you put me in this position so this is the call that I am suggesting Mr. President and laying out the reasons for uh, asking for his resignation yeah uh, and it's a long I time really coming think, I really think this was Kelly's doing. Um, uh, Bannon has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way within in the, the Trump White House. Um, but he has been somebody that Trump listens to. And uh, the only thing that's really gotten Trump's ire towards Bannon is SNL and how he was portrayed there, where he was the guy who was making decisions and Trump was the chump. Um, but with him taking a interview, uh, with a more liberal press after everything that's gone on with Charlottesville and just not playing well, a lot of people calling for at least a head and primarily his to roll. Uh, this is a real, no loss for any of the players here while Bannon loses out on having a, a nice white out white office office, uh, white house office. He gets to fall back into Breitbart open arms. He still has access to the president because the president, we know that he talks to him and trusts him. Um, so, and he doesn't necessarily listen to his chief of staff. Um, so he's very willful and will go outside su- suggested protocol. Mm-hmm. So Ben still has access. Um, and Kelly looks good cause he looks like he's cleaning house and Trump has thrown somebody to the lions. But in theory, it, it, that's all it is. It's just in theory in practice. This is a no, no loss for any of the players involved. Trump offered only a half-hearted defense of his chief strategist, who has had a target on his back ever since joining the administration. Quote, I like him. He's a good man. He's not a racist. I can tell you that, Trump said. But we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. (laughs) This is after, of course, the Charlottesville thing, where Trump did not immediately jump in and say that, you know, white nationalists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, that they were bad people. He didn't immediately say that, that they were evil. No. He said that he you know, used he, the Breitbart term alt right and yeah. that there were good people uh, coming to the defense of Confederate monuments and statues. Right. And, and again, I love the, I love you, Internet. Uh, somebody taking taking that video of him, him coming in defense of, of Confederate monuments and then playing from when he was on the campaign trail. Take all those Confederate flags down. Take them down and put them in the museum where they belong. Yeah. Which is something yeah. I can agree with. That's where they belong, in a museum. Yeah. And so, so no, it, it's, it's nutty. And part of it is a lot of people point out that all these quotes from Trump is been Bannon's influence. They point to that. Though we can also point to his own personal history, uh, his father and himself, in at least appearing to be racist. There, we, we don't have stuff that is necessarily clear out, but no, he denied black people uh, being able to rent in his properties. Yeah. He was fined. He has his uh, history of this. Yeah, it's public record. Yeah. Um, oh, here's something interesting. Uh, again, from the article on NPR. 
Quote, the populist nationalist movement got a lot stronger today, said Breitbart News Editor-in-Chief Alex Marlowe. According to the article, Breitbart gained an executive chairman with his finger on the pulse of the Trump agenda. Yeah, because he helped the, set it. The alt-right movement believes, knows in their bones that Trump has their back. Yeah. That he's one of them. That he's with them. And that should concern everyone. Well, it was pointed out on the campaign trail who he was appealing to. Oh, yeah. The it's entire David Duke thing. Yeah. Which can, continues to be a thing. Oh, and, and he, he was on camera after the Charlottesville issue as well. Yeah. David Duke was there, you know. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay. Well, you, my... sh- you should never, 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 ever, ever want David Duke's endorsement. Nope. You want to make that man angry every day. That should be a personal goal. And he's just kept getting it over and over and not said anything about it. I. Yeah. Even just... denying to knowing who the man is and was. Yeah. It's like, nope. No, you don't get to do that. You d- no, you don't get to do that. Uh, it's pretty bad. Pretty darn bad. So, um, thanks to things of that nature, uh, all 16 of the prominent artists, authors, performers, yes. and architects on the President's Committee on the Arts and the Humanities all resigned today, Friday, um, mm-hmm. which is the latest group to protest uh, Donald Trump's defense of white nationalists after the violent demonstrations in Charlottesville. Now, this uh, this was brilliant. It was well thought Art out. Hope. It was well done. And the first letter of, if you take the first letter of every paragraph, including the thank you at the end, it's spelled resist. Yes. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that artful, a lot. artful. Yes, um, but again, we also need to give credit where credit is due. Um, other people who are on other councils, CEOs have mm-hmm. have wa- resigned in protest. Um, now, a few yeah. resigned earlier based on <laughs> other misconduct. Yeah, by the Republican president, Musk bailed earlier, uh, for instance. Yeah, um, Musk bailed earlier. Uh, over pulling out the the Paris Accords. Yep. But no, uh, it's the point where Trump has dissolved because there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> to, to other committees, Ma- he made he did that so that it could look like it was his idea. Um, even it, though it clearly it, wasn't, and he it, was not it, in it, front of that at all. No, it's it was very sad spin. Oh yeah. Um. But it'll be it was, it'll be lapped up very readily by the alt right community. Well, by those who already support this man, that they they, mm-hmm. they cannot see him weak. They do not see him wrong. No, he's giving uh, them just go- enough to continue that that thought process in their head that he's he's still on their side. He's still fighting the good fight. It, it is what is very telling is actually what uh, happened on Good Morning America. Um, interviewing the the mother of um, uh, Heather Hare, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, woman the, who the woman that was run the fuck over uh, by that idiot who drove into a crowded a, a crowd of protesters, used the vehicle as a weapon. <sighs> yeah. um, vehicular and, homicide comes to mind. Yes, and. Initially tried to the, the the White House originally tried to call her during the funeral, uh, and she obviously did not answer the call, and then uh, was just tired and having to recoup, so she didn't answer other calls. And then on Wednesday, there were three uh, a furious. Uh, phone calls with messages from aides from the White House trying to get her on the phone. Um, she was just tired, and then she turned on the news and saw what he said. 
And in her interview again on Good Morning America, she goes, no, I will not speak with the president because of what he said and how he framed my daughter. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so the that's White a House, there. Yeah, the White House obviously was trying to have him get her on the phone and use that as an op to try and spin things positively. Right. Well, clearly. But that didn't work out so well for them. Um, no. So I think that, that is, uh, that's a good stopping point for, for this episode here, and we will resume with more science content and good news in, in just a couple moments. So, and... <clears throat> So we'll do our little uh, our little spiel here. I clicked the button. I did. There we go. Do it again. Okay. If you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash Radio. Get early access to show content or anything that I can possibly give you. And use your words. Tell somebody about us. And of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if they're more talkative sort, how about 470-222-6759? It's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 273 8255 Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you and your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been a really radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work license under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs>